What's up, everybody? It's your boy. Like I said, early in the AM, trying to get some more videos out. Don't forget, trending topics later on today uh, at um, 1300, aka 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, live on Periscope. Like, on some real shit. I might turn it on maybe like a minute before, but bitch, it's going down, all right? If y'all have any topics on some real shit, please um, send them to me. Just want to throw that out there. But we are here to discuss Black Ink Crew, Chicago. Yeah, my motherfucking city, y'all. <clears throat> Season one, episode, I believe this is three. So, go ahead, kind of move some of this stuff out. Wait. So, Charmaine does not remember the night before. So, she was so fucking far gone. And... I'm going to just leave it at that because I'm end up talking about it again and I'm starting to get to the point where if you guys remember um, when I was doing my love and hip hops, how whenever I get <clears throat> to uh, Kirk and Rashida, how I would just like skip over their shit. I'm getting to the point where I'm about to start skipping over Charmaine's shit and possibly Dunn's, but mostly Charmaine's because I don't have time to keep repeating myself and repeating the same exact shit that I'm saying fucking video to video, you know, I'm just saying. So, Ryan is being very mature about his uh, situation with um, Rachel, you know, because his family's asking him, like, what you gonna do? And he's like, well, I can't sit here and, like, blow up on her because if I do that, then there's gonna it's gonna create more distance. And then she could potentially make it more difficult for me to see my children. I'm like, this boy better say that shit. I'm like, go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Like, it's nice to see, you know, another king on TV with some fucking common sense. You feel what I'm saying? And then it makes me feel good that, you know, is it, you know, from Chicago. You feel what I'm saying? You know, make, makes me happen. Makes me happen. What else? Um... And, you know, we see Ryan uh, piecing together uh, his childhood and kind of looking forward with what's going on with his, uh, or what could happen <clears throat> with his children. Uh, and knowing that his mother uh, was not fully in the picture, or more or less that she left, and <clears throat> that caused him to be angry, and he turned to the streets. And, you know, because of that anger, but it was him having a son that kind of made him want to do the right thing and he doesn't want that for his children more or less just that whole separation he doesn't want to be a geographical you know parent having to you know constantly uh travel state to state to see his children which i i totally understand like, i don't understand understand because i don't have kids but i do understand what he's saying <clears throat> Now, uh, Four is discussing uh, that he has a show coming up. There's going to be some uh, big record heads coming out to see he's headlining this tour by himself. I'm not tour, but this uh, show himself. Like, it's only him up there. And, um, you know, like I said, Ryan's happy, but he asks him, like, well, <clears throat> if it comes uh, to you having to pick between tattooing and music, what would you do? <clears throat> And for some real shit, it's like, it's going to be my music because it's something that I always wanted to do. And Ryan's like, I, I wasn't expecting to hear that. And on some real shit, like, I kind of get that Ryan is being slightly selfish. <clears throat> but I do understand that, you know, Nymag is his baby and this is an extension of his family. More or less, this is his family that he's around all the time. So it's almost just like, okay, Rachel's about to leave. Now I'm about to have my brother over here leaving. You know, I can understand you know, I just don't want, you know, if things go the way that they might go and for leaves that, you know, he gets very, very selfish. You know, like I don't want to dislike Ryan. Like I actually like his character on here and I'm I'm loving the fact that <clears throat> just about everybody has a story. Like it is and I think Ryan had like his whole thing is, you know, like for him it's just telling his story. Everybody else is like the ratchet trick. Him is like actually getting to know him and his story. I fucking love it. Go ahead, Ryan. Woo woo, Team Ryan over here. What else we got? Um, all right. So <clears throat> now Don does not remember what happened the night before. Okay, don't remember the night before. And can I make one quick mention? Cause I forgot to mention this earlier. Cause it's Charmaine. So she don't remember what the fuck she did with her shoes and shit. And you laying up on cat uh, couch. But you won't see and talk shit about, oh, <clears throat> and this bitch wearing the same clothes. At least I went home and changed. Mm, well, at least she um, 
you didn't lose none of her motherfucking clothes and shit. Mm hmm. That's all I'm gonna say about that. I'm trying to sit here and shade the motherfucker. But <clears throat> they began to go at it, you know, and it's almost like they picked up from the night before. And um, <clears throat> Don's whole thing is a pan he's trying to say that um, Charmaine knew exactly who Ashley was in his life and all of that, and she's denied it. So he begins to get infuriated. And the one thing that I will say that I didn't like and I was very disgusted with is. You know, he began to come at her like she was a dude. I I really didn't like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, bowed up on her, all up in her face. Now, what I will say is, I think that Charmaine is used to those type of men, or has at least been in those situations, because she didn't back down. I mean, you know, she TTG, all right? She trained to go. I, I know women like that. I got women in my family like that that'll go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Shit, I got women in my family that will sit here and put their hands on and do it and knock their ass smooth the fuck out, I'm just saying. But, uh, you know, but it's one of those things where I don't necessarily like that because, like, you're putting yourself in a real fucking situation. And But what really made me sick to my stomach is when Don punches the wall and literally... Like, it's about that much space between his face, well, his hand and her face. She ain't flinch. But it was one of those where it's just like, dude, had you fucking connected. You know what I'm saying? It's one of those things where it's just like, whatever respect I think a lot of the viewers had for Don has gone down. A lot of my respect is going down. Like, it's shit like that that I just can't get with. You feel what I'm saying? Now, what I will say is I did not like how Charmaine was egging the shit on, where it's just like... The man is uh, is pissed off. Let him walk away. And she added to it. I'm not going to blame everything on Don because you can see he tries to walk away and she continues to reel him back in where it is by trying to keep the conversation going or even fucking following after him. So I definitely wasn't here for that. And, you know, she's sitting there talking about, oh, you want to try to make me the side piece? Why well, don't be the side piece or side bitch from here or whatever the case may be? And it's just like, you're entertaining this. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, again, you want us to believe that, you know, you trying to hold your crown as a queen, but again, you act like a fucking commoner, and I can't. All right, so not a whole lot that I really want to talk about, but uh, Van, we're starting to get uh, to see a little bit more. I, I really do think they're really taking the time to give us the opportunity to learn a lot about each individual person. Actually, build their stories that Hallie did with Ryan, because we're starting to see that with. Um, Van, you know, like I said, he was a young uh, parent, this, that, and third, uh, lost his father at seven. <clears throat> he feels that contributed to him, uh, you know, uh, going to the streets and whatnot. He has a daughter, like I said, she's pretty. Uh, I, I forget how old his daughter was, but, you know, they was making a joke about uh, she hanging out with Charmaine. He like, mm, and I'm kind of looking like, good fucking decision. Uh, but, um... <clears throat> Yeah, he's facing a gun charge. And it's like, he even said that he's not afraid of prison, jail, whatever we're going to call it. But he just doesn't want to be away from um, his daughter. And, you know, I can I can truly understand that. So, you know, like I said, I like that. I do. I do. I want to see him, you know, body slam some more motherfucking people. I'm just saying. But, you know, it's nice to, you know, just kind of see, I guess we could say the tender hearted, uh, you know, person. Because, you know, again, they say that, you know, like his whole persona is uh, the bodyguard. So it's nice to, you know, just kind of see, you know, I guess we could say, the, okay, I really shouldn't say warm and cuddly. But, yeah, y'all know what the fuck I mean. Uh, what else? <clears throat> so, cat, not cat. <clears throat> Four is in the studio. Um,. Boys in the zone in his element. I'm like, I, right, I, right. man, like he up in again. I'm gonna give it to him. I'm gonna give it to him. And uh, Charmaine and uh, Cat walk in, and it's like they're kind of like playing into the song. But again, he's so focused that he doesn't hear them or see them until they actually uh, get like like this close to his face or whatever. And you know, uh, he and uh, well, Cat, I'm sorry, she finds it to be very, very fucking sexy to see him in his element. So Charmaine is mad because um you, you know um how you hear songs where you know people say how it's a whole room of people but it's just me and you like that is what it was it's just like both of them tuned out the rest of the world Charmaine was so through just like she fucking left <laughs> 
But you know they go in the studio. Uh, well, actually, before they go in the booth and whatnot, and you know, chat it up. Uh, four asks her on an official date. She agrees. Caught her off guard. Mm-hmm. Like I said, like I said, she uh, she uh, she leaking, soaking wet. And uh, yeah, we're going to see where this goes. But you know, pretty much, she is saying that anyone that she ever gets with, she tells them that you know, once we go there, you know, <clears throat> I guess. She, I guess how does she say it? I was like she's the girlfriend for hell, but not really. I don't know. I, I missed that part. It is what it is, man. All right, so we have Don going back down memory lane. Uh, <clears throat> a friend of his comes in, someone who he used to play uh, basketball with, comes in <clears throat> and then uh, talking with him and him getting uh, a tattoo. You know, he starts to go back down memory lane. You know of how things used to be, and even gives us a little more insight into what happened with him because again they briefly talked about everybody's story on the first episode now we're starting to get Don's story and you know long story short he was partying having a good time acting crazy uh one night uh you know his girl cheats on him played his ass to the left he's over intoxicated goes to somebody else's dorm and he flips out he puts his hands on them he, uh, I guess who they said he doesn't remember it happening but he did but he scared the fuck out of them where they don't say shit to him anymore I think he even got behind the wheels, so pretty much when he uh, appeared in court, it was either, you know, take the guilty plea or your ass is going to jail. So pretty much he is, I guess we could say, a felon convicted of whatever we want to say. And <clears throat> one thing about Chicago is you got anything on your motherfucking uh, record, it's hard to get a job. And you bet not have shit on your record dealing with children. You're done. You're done. I, you're, you're done. Just, yeah. So, you know, he regrets a lot of that. And he was supposed to be, you know, the one in the family to bring him and his brother out the hood. And now it seems like the roles are reversed. But you can see that seeing his uh, friend was uh, very, very bittersweet. So I'm not I'm not going to clown Don too much right now. There's enough time in other episodes to do that. Cat and Four pretty much having their date night. Uh, four, you know, he was a little slick with the shit. You know, he ordered takeout, but he put some of the food uh, on the stove to make it seem as if he was cooking. I'm like, all right, all right, <clears throat> kind of slick as shit, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, he's uh, pushing up on Cat, and she's pretty much just saying that she doesn't want any serious relationship. She's only had three, and all three has ended um in a very bad way. And, you know, her whole thing is, you know, she kind of hit him with, you know, one of the umbrella lines like, shit, what we got is good. Let's just keep it where it's at. So we'll see what happens. But, of course, you know, uh, four isn't feeling the shutdown. And then we have Van. Um, <clears throat> he's uh, pretty much being told that he more than likely would have to serve uh, for his uh, gun charge. Um, and pretty much what it was is uh, he had been robbed at his previous uh, tattoo shop. So... He uh, had a gun, of course, is uh, unregistered, uh, and he uh, pulled up to a, uh, I believe, a club, or whatever. Next thing he knows, there's gun pointed at him, and I guess somebody asked him uh, about what's in the car, and he even says, "Honestly, I have a pistol in my glove compartment." And seeing as how he has like two previous charges, <clears throat> this is being blown out of proportion, and he's being told that he may have to serve at a minimum three years at max seven, and if he serves three at least 18 months of that will be in prison and it's really hitting him hard you know and you even see him break down in the confessional which you know it's one of those where you know he show he's being very fucking vulnerable and you know I don't, it's not just him going to jail but it's him knowing that if he goes to jail he's not going to be there for his daughter and that's at a minimum 18 months without her father and you know, those 18 months can, you know, really wreak havoc. And, you know, <clears throat> it's one of those ways, like, it's nice to see, you know, him um, being transparent like that. And, you know, I really hope that he does not end up going to jail. Hopefully, his uh, attorney can uh, work this shit out for him. Hopefully. All right, right quick, if I could just do a plug. If y'all have not tried motherfucking Bumblebee, motherfucking smoked salmon, okay, y'all y'all need to get y'all some this shit. If y'all love y'all. The motherfucker smokes down. This shit is fucking delicious. Mm -hmm. Fun. Come on now. Mm. Mm. I had to do that. <clears throat> this shit fucking good. Mm -hmm. 
Hold on. Ah. Okay. Left me stuff in my face. All right. So they're at uh, Four's um <clears throat> concert. Bro went ahead, you know, did his thing. You know, he has like a very, very different sound. You know, it's like <clears throat> it's almost like combining a little bit of rock, a little bit of punk with hip hop. So I mean, he has this whole little aura. I, like I wish they. What I kind of wish is that they would have um shown like the whole concert as an extension of Black Ink Crew, just so you know we could have saw it, but of course they're not gonna do that. So it's over, and um, you have um, sorry, y'all see, still seeing food in my mouth and shit. You see um, Ashley just like staring at Charmaine and. <clears throat> Charmaine, uh, Kat, and uh, I think her name is Danielle. Decided they just gonna fucking leave. So they're outside talking about shit. So Ashley comes up, trying to be all sweet and shit. And she's like, I want to talk to you. She's like, I want to know what, like, you know, Don works long hours and you're there. I want to know what's going on. You know, like, and she, because she's asking her, like, are y'all having sex? Now you're asking her if she's fucking you. And she was like, well, you know, we have gone the whole way. She's like, well, the whole way, how? And, you know, she was like, yes, I've had sex with him. And she mushes the fuck out of her. Straight on the turn up. And as soon as that happened, you know, it's like I was expecting Charmaine to fucking go fucking ballistic, but she didn't. Part of me really wanted to see her do it, though. <clears throat> and, you know, actual thing is how you expect me to be cool when you smile in my face and that you fuck my man. Uh, no, you asked her if she did. You know, it's one of the ways it's like... I was really trying to be here for Ashley on some real shit, but you know, I, I can't, I can't, I'm not here for Ashley. I'm damn sure not here for fucking Charmaine. I can't deal with them, one of them helpless. But, um, <clears throat> you know, she's like, well, I'm finna go get my man, you know, that's my man. Da, 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 da. So she go up in there and try to get motherfucking Don and shit. And you really don't see the interaction. All you see is a motherfucking chair fly out the motherfucking, uh, you know, door of the place. So <clears throat> I think we've already noticed that Don, uh, has issues he has anger issues he does not know how to deal with confrontation because his first instinct is to get loud to get defensive and to try to use his uh appearance his strength and all of that to i guess uh intimidate so it is what it is but that is all that i have uh we about to see this shit um actually escalate a little bit between ashley and donald the next episode I will be here, of course. Hopefully, you guys are here. I'll try to pop this review out. Actually, I think I might be able to get the last two out and get fully caught up before my trending topics. We'll see. But until the next time, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.